There is a rule coming out now that if you change your number, you have to buy the existing inventory in the NFL shop of your old uniforms. Now, this has happened before in other sports when players have changed numbers. I've heard this happen, and every single time it happens, Kevin Seifert, Seifert of ESPN is reporting this. I, every single time this happens, you always think to yourself, why, why do players have to do this? They're just buying something that inevitably probably is going to go up in value. So why wouldn't the league just sell them at a premium value as opposed to making the player buy out in the inventory? I guess it's because the NFL and these leagues go, oh, you want to yeah, you be cute, change your number? Huh? You ain't costing us money, all right? You're going to have to buy back every motherfucking one we had very cheaply built that we will charge yeah. for $300. You've got to buy back every single one of those things. I guess it's to try to limit people from doing it so there are some consequences. But this always felt stupid because those jerseys, if, if you have to buy a bunch – and you're changing your number, and it affects that, that means you're a successful player. That means you're a, a, a fan favorite. That means a lot of your jerseys sell. So your old jersey is still going to be worth a lot of money. It doesn't make sense that that is something that happens to me. It seems short-sighted by the leagues, but what do I know, really? Well, if a, if a, like a star player changes their number, say, 10 years into their career, everybody is making more money because of it. If you're a Tom Brady fan, you have a 12 jersey from the Patriots, the Bucks now he switches to number eight. Guess what? I need a number eight Tom Brady jersey. So the NFL makes money. The pro shops make money. And Tom gets a little bit more. I don't know if he actually now, – those jersey checks. Yeah, I don't know. The jersey checks that he's getting and Drew Brees is getting yeah. ooh, are very large. Oh, yeah. Now, I will say, there for a time in Indianapolis, I think I had the number two selling jersey in Indianapolis. I actually made – uh, like the Dick's Sporting Good top 100 jersey sales for a couple weeks I was in there, right? So shout out, by the way, to the Indianapolis Colts fans, people that followed me on Twitter and everything like that. I appreciate the hell out of that. It was a big honor. But my shit sold out all the time because they didn't have as many jerseys of mine uh, that they obviously thought were going to sell. And by the way, I was promoting nobody to buy those. Every time somebody showed up to me with one, I was like, that is way overpriced. You shouldn't have done that. Buy the jersey. <laughs> I always tell them, buy the jersey instead. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper. We get it. It's a lot more fun. But I was always very honored when people bought the jersey because of how overpriced it was. But it was sold out. There's not, a lot of, there's not a lot of inventory for a lot of these guys. There's only a few guys that have a lot of inventory where there's a lot, a lot of jerseys being sold national. And I would assume those guys, the reason why their jerseys are being sold nationally is because they're big fucking names. So wouldn't you want to keep their last jersey? I don't, I don't, I just, this seems like a bad business decision. This just made me think too, do you know, like, do you guys, I, like I've seen, I've had people send me pictures of it all the time. Like uh, someone goes and buys a jersey from Kohl's and the NFL is definitely okay with it. Like it has an NFL patch on it, but like people have sent me like an AJ Hawk jersey that's number 52 or whatever, but, or 50 and his name's not on the back. Like you're not seeing any money out of that, no, right? No, no, no. And my mom was buying them. My mom was buying jerseys of mine from like $25 jerseys. Mm -hmm, she yeah. was buying that. I'm not seeing any of that either. And of the real jerseys, what are we seeing? 0.0002% or something of the sale for that thing? Yeah, it's, it's something pretty small. And I think when you buy authentic jerseys, they're like 180 bucks or maybe more now. 200 yeah, yeah, more. Like yeah. The, the real ones are like 200 some or whatever. I, just, I, I got some pretty good checks for my jersey sales. It would come out of nowhere. It would be awesome. I get like, you know... Ten thousand dollars or something like that. Not Jeez. bad. I'm like that's a lot of fucking money. And I'm like, uh, if I'm getting, wait a minute, Hold how on. much did they how just make off of my guy? <laughs> Hold on, let me think. Good for them, I guess. And then the NFLPA is like, hey, don't worry about it. We'll sell your entire name, image, and likeness to <laughs> yeah. fanatics, and you'll get point oh 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 one percent of their t-shirt sales as well. It's a like, great deal. Thank you so much for that. Very nice. You. We need Treader to get on that. By the way, yes, we need him to yeah. use that brand. Good luck. Evolve the business of the NFLPA. They they signed some deals for me that I was not. I actually did not join the NFLPA the last couple of years of my career because I didn't want them making license and merch deals for me because I understood. The the value of merch actually started a merch business so I could sponsor a car in the Indy 500 saw the amount of money possibly made off the merch business and when the NFLPA was like uh, just signing to fanatics yeah go ahead and make boomstick Pat McAfee shirts whatever uh, you want to give him 45 cents per shirt sale that you're selling for 25 bucks cool that's absolutely cool it's like hey fuck you how about that how about you don't do what you just did anymore and maybe I have some aggressions against the NFLPA because of a lot of poor decisions but I think Trent is going to turn that thing around AJ He's definitely trying, but uh, it seems like a pretty good business plan if you are if you work for the NFL or you're an owner or GM of a team. Yeah, I, I also love the fact that they're like, 
Oh, they want to change their number? Well, what about all these goddamn jerseys that we're potentially not going to sell that we thought we were definitely going to sell, and we actually put an entire budget around actually selling every single one of these? I know businesses fail sometimes, but not this business. They got to buy them all then. Fuck them. We, we didn't make these for no reason. Make them buy. I love that. That they're just able to do that, by the way, and it doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, that's what they, hey, that's how this whole thing works around here. Why don't they just do what they do with like the, uh, the shirts that they print for like the Super Bowl teams that don't yeah. win, like they just send yes. them to some village and wherever you know that that needs them, and the NFL can gain a little goodwill that way. See that? But they're not going to do that. What no, they, they should do is they should hoard all those. Yeah, they should hoard all of them and just wait twenty, thirty years. Somehow get them. Some, maybe the deal should be you have to sign all these ones. Ooh. There you go. Guys would be so mad. Guys <laughs> would be so so mad. Hey, that signing gimmick is. It's, it's its own hustle in its own right there. That whole signing thing. I know guys that'll sit, Which one? The, the guys will sit down and sign like 2,000 things or whatever in one day. It's like, gosh, how do you know how much money that's, that's valued at? You, it's all, Well, you go in with a price per autograph you're doing. Yeah, it's awesome. How do you have the will How do you just sit there? It's a long it. time. It's obviously a, a, a Private tedious. ones are the best. If you can sit there privately and sign a 1,000 things, you can do that fast. But if you're going to sit there for two and a half, three hours and do like in person where they're coming through a line pre-COVID, that's a little different. See, AJ, you're from Ohio State, so you guys are doing private paid signings, what, since you're like in high school or whatever? True. <laughs> no, but as soon as you get done playing, you can. I know. I heard these stories from Ohio State players that were like, literally, as soon as our last game was played, uh, we're just getting offered $50,000 for signings because yeah. Ohio State fans are just so happy. I got offered 750 bucks to appear at a wrestling event Ooh, <laughs> Charleston, West Virginia. Did you go? Yeah, I told him to keep the money, too, because I got a chance to wrestle Warpig. <laughs> Took out Warpig. It was a great moment. <laughs> gave, him, gave him a super kick right to the jaw, and that was back when the super kick mattered. Fucking knocked his ass out, dude.